Today, we embark on another Idaho adventure. This time, we're traveling far and deep into dangerous waters and one of the most gnarly canyons on the west coast of the United States. Chasing one of the oldest species and most prehistoric animals known to mankind. Getting to share a fishing experience with a best friend on any style of fishing adventure is something seldom experienced in a fisherman's life. The only thing that stands between us and our success is a deep canyon, gnarly rapids, and one of the most intense fishing fights of our lives. Welcome to Idaho, fish fighter style. We are Idaho bound everybody and I cannot wait for this trip. This is to one of my favorite rivers in the entire world. And this river system is my very favorite because of the variety and the diversity that it shows. So it's a short plane ride. We decided not to drive on this trip. We're gonna fly. It's like an hour and a half plane ride. We get the rental car and we're off to our first stop, the Inventive Group factory. We're here. Jordan can barely get out, guys. Jordan's injured. For the first time in Jordan's life, he actually has an injury. Addicts, me and Jordan are in the old state of Idaho. We're doing something fun here, something I've really wanted to do for a long time just because of how innovative these guys are. We're at Fish Fighter, one of our great sponsors, and we're gonna go through here, tour the factory, see some of how their products come together, and maybe sneak peek some of the new stuff that they're coming out with. Let's go find out what's going on in here. All right, here. Hello. Marlon. Yep. Okay. Jordan, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yes, made it. How you doing? Marlon, come ahead. All right, guys, we're inside. Chuck, Alex, why don't you guys introduce yourself? Tell everyone what you do for Fish Fighter and tell the audience what's up here. Hi, I'm Chuck Ciccarelli. What I do is my official title is Regional Director of Excitement with Platinum Satis. So <laughs> my job is to excite people and make them excited about being here. And that's really what I do. Well, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Alex Rodriguez. I'm the head of sales, uh, lead sales for Fish Fighter. So manage the team and, and help out where I need to be. And yeah, so. Cool. Well, we appreciate you guys having us. Let's go get a tour of this place, huh? Yeah. Right. So this is a real quick of our new showroom. And as I was telling you, like this is a dream that we moved into this new facility. I, I never would have thought this was possible. Literally, Four years ago, Fish Fighter had one salesperson, Alex. And it, it's just been phenomenal, the growth, and it's hard to catch your breath, yeah, right? Really this cool. is a dream, but this is our showroom. And as I mentioned, and I don't want to confuse people, but we did start Razorback Off-Road, and our big start was in the tow truck industry building accessories. One of the cool things about Chuck is he started basically like a towing business. He was making accessories for tow trucks, different towing vehicles, and then he just kept expanding, really good at manufacturing, being able to basically do the same thing in the fishing world and just create these products that are literally built by anglers, for anglers, tested to heck, and Fish Fighter products is amazing. I'm excited to be in Idaho and see this. This is our <laughs> fitness center. So this is really cool, because one of the things at my day job that one of our core values is culture by design. To me, this is like, I, I can see it, 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 you do it here. Everybody has the opportunity to succeed. Mm -hmm. So we're and giving the you the opportunity to be the best version of yourself. Exactly. That's cool. So we have a lot of fun. We have company lunches every month. Oh my <laughs> marketing department <laughs> has been making fun of me. That's they, we heavy. Whoops. Hilarious. So we mentor companies from around the world. You can come here and spend a day with us and we'll talk about this. And they're always impressed with our company culture. And I'm like, really? So here's our rules. We all hold hands when we cross the street. <laughs> Don't take what's not yours. If you hurt someone, say you're sorry. You know, you're here on your own free will. No one's forcing you to stay. So it's up to you to make it a good place to be. So my motto in our company is always that ordinary people can do extraordinary things. We have these touch screens all over, so we want to make sure that everybody knows you're here and we want you to feel welcome. You know, put your name up in lights. You know, we had other visitors here yesterday. 
what's really neat about this, if let's say we come up with a real quick idea right here, you know, we can just start talking about it, you know, and drawing squares. Oh, so holes. freaking next level. You know, we can use a protractor and we can really get crazy with some of the stuff that we're doing here. But it's fast, innovation. We're all about innovation. I was absolutely blown away. What Fish Fighter and this whole entire inventive group company was able to accomplish is, is honestly just really inspiring. Like, it got me at home, like, wanting to change stuff all around the Addicted Warehouse and figuring out how I could make it more efficient. And just really, really cool to see. Looks like an amazing workplace, and I'm excited just to walk around and see the whole thing. This means a lot to us. This is paradise. And so when we walk through these doors, you're entering our version of paradise. And that's how the music plays, how we dress, how we treat one another, everything. So welcome to paradise. We just finished a round of Fish Fighter Innovation for really the last three months. We were trying to get ready for uh, spring fishing and uh, June fishing. Now we've switched over to developing products for the new side-by-sides. So much bigger than what I envisioned, Addicts. Okay. So much bigger. Well, it wasn't three years no, ago. No. And that's what's so cool. You can, you've seen the innovation and growth of the company over the last few years, and it's just it's yeah, pretty I was amazing. I going to say, we got a robot headed out, I see the blue light coming on. What's really cool about how we run our company, so like, see this crane? Everything we do is because we believe we can do it better. Other people make tackle tenders or rod risers or anchors. Anchors have been around forever, <laughs> forever yeah, right? Forever. It started with a rock, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. So Thomas Edison had a great quote. He said, there's a better way for everything. Find it. That's our goal find a way to do it better. It's not copying somebody, it's not knocking them off. You know, you take a pocket knife. Can we improve on a pocket knife? Yes. Oh, yeah. And we let's pray that somebody does because that's how we progress. Think about wooden wheels. We used to have wooden wheels. Well, we, Fred Flintstone had stone wheels. Then we evolved to wooden wheels. And then somebody said, I think I can make a wooden wheel better by making it out of rubber and putting air in it. Now the technology in tires is beyond it, right? Think about being Goodyear or Michelin or Bridgestone, waking up every morning trying to out-innovate the next person. Like, that's exciting, yeah. right? Cranes. We didn't like the cranes on the market, so we made our own, and that's a model. So we give the credit away, right? We believe the truly great people give the credit away. That's uh, Justin, Kyle, and Chuck, February of 21. So which way do you hang the broom up? See the happy face? We want all the happy faces pointing out. Don't hang this up this way. Now you get dirt on the wall. And it's not happy. We want everything happy. That sound is a sell. So that was in the ditch sold something. Fish fighter, it's here, fishy, fishy, fishy. We want to live in Mountain Home. I showed you we shoot shotgun trap right across the road. You know, we're 20 minutes from the Snake River. This is life for me. So every time somebody buys something from Fish Rider, it goes over the intercom, and then we know we got work. And we're really thankful to be able to live here. And, you know, like our community, hopefully tomorrow night we can go to the car races. We're sponsoring the car races, and we're giving back to our community. Yeah, absolutely. It's awesome. So green light, you're telling everybody in the world, hey, my life is good. Things are going great. If this person starts to struggle, they'll turn the light to yellow. And once it goes to yellow, they have 10 minutes to try to fix it locally. It's as if your son or daughter in their classroom raised their hand, you want them to get help, right? If they can't fix it, they turn it to red. And that's telling everybody, hey, I've stopped and I may have an effect on you down the road. And then the department leader they have 15 minutes to fix that problem. If they don't fix it, then the red team comes in and tries to mentor them through deeper problem solving. We run hand on lights in the toilet stalls, and that just tells you if they're being used so you don't waste time going in there. Trust me, if they're all red, do not go in there.
So as you're walking around the warehouse, you're kind of mind blown. I mean, there's literally like robots cruising across the floor. There's these just massive machines that they're using to basically like CNC cut things, stamp the products out. And one thing I have to say is this place is a gear junkie's wet dream. The tools and the, and the things that they had to develop the products that they do was incredible. That's Larry, because he gets her done, and that's his big brother Bubba. It was pretty neat. I'd never seen such a smooth operation, something that was so clean, beautiful, smooth running, and the operation in itself was just incredibly impressive. There was a lot of tools and stuff under this building that I had no clue even existed. Okay guys, so while we're here at Fish Fighter, we thought it'd be a cool idea to just kind of show you what it takes to really make these products from start to finish. Everything from the planning portion of it, the engineering portion. So Chuck's gonna start kind of walking us through just, what product are you gonna start with? What we thought we'd do is today we would show you the life of a rod riser, how we make the rod riser, and then in really big detail is the life of our tackle tender. And recently what we've just done is added adjustability into it. And then also a few people were complaining, even myself, that when you lean into these, they were bending. So we added a new strength rib in the back of it and we thickened up the aluminum. But by adding adjustability, you can now raise and lower the height because sometimes- Some boats are different, right? Yep, and yeah. sometimes you go to lock it in and your fishing guide oh, is right the rods, in the way. yeah, yeah. So now we got adjustability. But what I'm saying is, is we've been making these for about four years and we're already on about the sixth revision. We're, we're not afraid to change it. If it, Jordan was talking about that this morning, right? If, if fishing isn't working, let's deviate and try something different. Yeah. So we want to follow this through the process. So we'll go from here. Let's go on up into engineering and, and kind of see where we take it from there on all our solid works. Love it. And then this is our accounting department. Hello. Good, Marlon. Welcome in. Dean, nice to meet you guys. Jordan, nice to meet you. All right. So here we are in our engineering think tank and I, I just kind of want to show you a couple things that we've done as far as innovation, like our ankle rope retriever. Yep. This is first iteration that we 3D printed. We made this version for a couple years and now this is our final version. Tomorrow we're going to be testing tool holders because a lot those. of people are pushing fish hook remover, your pliers, scissors, and a knife, and then your scents, and then this will hold our bait towel. You can hang treble hooks, but kind of some innovation we've done is the back of your knife storage is all open, so when you get blood and guts in there, you can run a hose and it'll wash out. These are just revisions of our new rope handle yep. and our cleat, which you guys are gonna use. But what we're really here to talk about is this, and so Kyle, Davis is our head engineer and really has been a driver in helping us design this. So I thought he'd take a moment and show you on SolidWorks and I'll step out of the way. Okay, so we draw everything into 3D CAD model in SolidWorks. So every, every aspect of this part is designed, every piece of it. You have all the different pieces that we can look at. All done on the computer in yeah. this software before it even sees yeah, a 3D printer make, or anything. Yeah, before we make any of these parts, it's all conceptualized in, in, in the computer. So how easy is it to make changes to the, to the product here? Like say we wanted to increase a whole size or make that longer. So we can come into all these different pieces and we can come into any different um, feature that we have and we can change that just by selecting any of these dimensions. That's crazy. Changing it and it'll just stretch to wherever you kind of want. That's unreal. And so how long from start to finish does something like this take to actually design, like from concept to where you got it to the final 3D CAD? So like this one, for example, where, you know, we came up with an idea, we draw it all on, on cardboard. Within an hour to two hours, he's got this kind of drawn. Wow. Out. And then now we're kind of talking now that we see it spatially. Sometimes when you draw it, it doesn't quite look uh -huh. right. And now you're like, okay, let's talk about it. Make a couple more tweaks. And then now we, you know, within the next day to two days, we'll be uh, prototyping these things out. That's crazy. We wanted to have this ready for you guys. I went and fished with it last night. Got with him at seven this morning. Says, I'd like to see some changes. And they're hoping to have the changes on the boat before we leave in the morning. That's so cool. That's crazy. Well, let's go see how it comes together from this process, huh? All right, so here we are in our R&D department, and this is Wyatt, one of the engineers, Wade. How's it going? <laughs> here we have the part. 
So once we've designed the first part, the first article, we want to validate that this was all made in our shop to match the computer model. So he's going to go ahead and set it, I believe, on here, right? Yep. And the program should auto match with it if we hook up the model to it. So this was a significant investment. So in the old days, and when I say the old days, I'm talking four years ago, it was, you know, we would use calipers to measure. You know, you're sitting out here trying to get measurements and tape measures. And now we can take this hexagon arm and it has 3D scanning capabilities. I'll let him scan it, but we're gonna scan the part and then he's gonna validate and lay that part over the original and it's gonna show us how far off. So what used to take us weeks is now down into minutes. So that's I'm gonna wild. go ahead and let Wyatt just kind of do a real quick scan. But that's just our commitment to putting out the best product we possibly can. This is how long it takes to scan a product in. This is crazy, Addicts. This arm is scanning it. It's literally building it right here. That's wild. How many of you out there watching realize that this much went into building these things? Because I didn't. I had no clue. Now he's going to show you on here. He's going to overlay it, and we're going to check to make sure it's meeting our tolerances. So now this is overlaying the scan part to the part in the computer, and we're going to see if there's differences. So the red is saying we're out of tolerance. We've exceeded the five thousandths of an inch. Now the human hair, I think, is around ten thousandths of an inch. The green means we're right on, and the blue means we're slightly under. Is that correct? So now he's going to increase our tolerances to sixty thousandths of an inch, and now we're compliant everywhere except for possibly right there. That's crazy. Yeah, it's it's a significant investment to put forth the best product we can. So now we're gonna move on and show how we cut it on our lasers. Lasers. Here we are, Marlon, we're gonna show you all the automation. So right now it's picking up the parts that were left on the laser. Yep. Now you can see the sheet of aluminum is coming in on the top carriage. That's what we're gonna turn into tackle tenders. So it's coming over to unload and while it's un Loading this part, it's setting the other one down onto the other machine. There's going to be a table coming out right now that's unloading other tackle tenders that were just cut. And then that one's going to slide in there and, and start to cut it. this one's going to go in, and then we're going to go around and watch it cut this. All right, Marlon, so here we are at one of our lasers, and everything we give a name, and this happens to be Philly. Right Philly. Here. The other one's Reuben. And that's because the guy that set it up like uh, Philly sandwiches and Reuben. So we got Reuben and Philly. But here we are at Philly. This is an eight kilowatt laser. What's really cool about lasers is we're actually cutting with an actual light beam. And the light beam gets generated in an RF generator and it gets shot down and it ricochets off of mirrors. And then it goes to a lens that's flexed with water. And we're focusing that laser beam like a flashlight beam. We're making it come together like a point of light that just cut through the bottom of the aluminum. Crazy. If it was uncontrolled, it could potentially shoot through the floor. Yeah, yeah. And Spencer's the, one of the talented people that knows how to make all of this work. Okay. So the material has just come in. Now, if you guys want to focus, he's, the machine's going to come out and measure the sheet, and then it's going to start cutting. Here we go. That's crazy. All right, Marlon, so here's the press break. So we've, we've gone from design to R&D to lasers. Now we're at the press break. So the lasers have cut these parts out and we need to form this. So as you can see, we have a lot of press breaks. We have a 230 ton press break, 130 ton, another 130 ton. And then we have this one, which is a 36 ton. And this is a high speed press brake. Yeah. So Sam's changing tooling out right now. 
and he's loading the tooling in there. Sam, how long have you been with us? Uh, 12 years. So he's been here 12 years, so we're pretty proud of that. Pretty proud of Sam, too. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna form this into that part, but look at how fast this machine runs. It's wild. And this, this screen's kind of telling you a little bit of what to do here. Yeah, so that's showing us where the position of the tools are at, the angles that we need to correct for. So this, this screen right here, Alex, is basically telling him where he needs to place it, what tools he's got in there. Correct. But what's interesting, let me wow. move these two. This is the little tray. <laughs> and so, but little things that people don't understand. So this is where your sinker sets in the tray. This is where your bait lays. Well, we actually put these little corner notches so that the blood and goo that can wash yeah, it goes out. out yeah, but pretty impressive. That's the thing I always say about fish fighter guys. If you ever considering fish fighter at all, they put a lot into all the little details, and that's what I love about it on my boat. They really spend time thinking about everything, and it's it makes a big difference when you're on your boat. Now we bent the parts, laser cut them, and now the robot's going to come in and grab this cart, and it's going to take it to the next station which is gonna be at our machine shop. A lot of people say robots are for replacing humans, but here it's completely different. That used to be a person doing the walking. That person now has been retrained to run more advanced machines and they have more time to go to the fitness center. But now it's heading on and we're gonna follow it to the machine shop. So now we are, we're at the machine shop. Tony here is gonna help or he runs the machine and he does this, but we're gonna start out with some marine grade King Starboard. And this machine and Tony are gonna to turn it into this. So I'm gonna just let you go through the motions. And so he's gonna locate it on our vacuum table. We're gonna close the door. And then if you look up here, this is our tool holder. So it's bringing up the next tool that we're gonna need. Now, if you look in there, there's a probe that just came down. Yes, I just said probing. That's making sure that we have the right thickness of material and that it's located in the proper point. Now it's indexing again. Okay, so now it's drilling the holes. Now watch how fast it changes tools. Holy sh... Now while it's doing that, it just indexed the next tool. Tony's going to go in and take the part out. Then he's got to deburr it a little bit, and then we're going to put it in for off two. He's going to put a locating pins in. And then the vacuum table is going to suck that down with air. So now we've just finished machining and we're on to the next one, these two completed parts. We're gonna go on over to final assembly where they assemble this and get it ready to ship. All right, here we are in our hardware section and as you can see, thousands and thousands of, of nuts and bolts that we've gotta pick to make sure we get the right part. So our engineers work with the company and help develop this pick to light. So when it's time to do the uh, tackle tender, we're going to go ahead and, and hit the recipe button. Kristen's going to go ahead and do that. Now it's going to start illuminating where we're going to go next. So you see this light flashing. So it tells you you need a quantity of two. So we're going to reach in, grab two. Now we go and look for the next flashing light. And it just sits there and tells you along the process what you need to get. And then as we pull all of the parts, you can see another light flashing down here. So we're gonna grab two of these. And as we gather the parts up, once we're done, then we take the parts here and we place them on this gram scale. It's very sensitive, watch, I'll just put them two screws. And so we have a weight for the amount of hardware that's supposed to weigh to go in the bag. So like we double cross check. validate again. Yeah, yep. that's smart. Here's our target weight. So there's it would be 2.33 pounds as the target weight. So now we've got all the hardware pulled. Now we're gonna walk so down here. 
is crazy addicts, crazy. Hi, Steve. Steve's gonna go ahead and show how we assemble it. So we have all the work instructions up here and there's the sales order for who the company is. So he's gonna go ahead and assemble it. Awesome. Thanks, man. All right, so here's a fully assembled tackle tender. Now we're gonna go on down to packaging, which is down here. Perfect. All right, now we are, we're here at packaging and Michelle's gonna show us how uh, we package everything. Sweet, let's see it. That's wild. Now we're down to shipping, and John is going to load this up, and it's getting packaged and getting ready to ship out to a customer. Yeah. The final step in the process, the step. getting shipped to you addicts out there. So some of the things we've done for our lean initiative, we built the scale into the packaging table so you don't have to package it. Oh, yeah. Then go weigh it. And then instead of scrunching paper, we have paper shooters. So you don't waste time. Smart. <laughs> and then our scale is tied right into our UPS, so it just you don't have to even enter the weight. And there you have it, addicts. That is pretty crazy to see that whole process, literally from engineering to R&D to right here. Now it's heading to one of you fishing addicts out there. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys like that little demonstration. We run circles around the competition here at Fish Fighter. Now throughout the day and while we're at lunch, Chuck tells us he wants to go show us part of his car collection. And when I think car collection, I think it's some old, you know, from where I'm from, it's some old cars parked out behind the barn that maybe you'll get to and work on one day. And I had no clue what we were about to walk into when we walked through the doors of this next building. That is bad. So the guys that invented it in the 60s, they thought a young couple could buy this car drive it to work, and then go fishing on the weekends, take their kids out. I mean, this was really an intent. You know what I mean? We try to pay homage and go out fishing in it. <laughs> it has 31 inches of rear travel. How often you try this thing? Not very much. That's what I look, look at the shock reservoirs for the gas. That's what I do. So over the years, Chuck and his family have been able to accumulate an insane car collection. You know, he, he grew up loving cars and kind of collecting from a really, really early age. And we got the opportunity to walk around and give you guys the VIP tour of some of these amazing vehicles. Thanks for the tour. Love it, love it, love it! So we get an early start on day number two because it's gonna be like 110 degrees out here today. We are in the middle of the desert, again, on one of the most incredible bodies of water that I know of on the west coast of the United States. It ain't a fishing trip without a dozen donuts, baby. Fat snack Marlin's back. So here we are, day two, and I am so excited. We are gonna jet boat up a river. We are gonna be looking for massive fish. We're talking fish potentially in the 10 foot range. So this is gonna be a really, really cool experience. So 
we head rip up river and watch that sun come up, it's time to go catch some fish. Morning, addicts. After a quick little run up the river here, Chuck is getting us anchored. We're doing something a little unique here, something I've never really even done. Tied in two different directions at an angle here, and we're gonna be fishing off the back of his boat. Let's get some lines in the water. We're gonna show you guys what we're after next. I got some bait. I don't know what he is, but he's, he's a fighter. A squaw. Perfect. Got some bait, Alex. Exactly what we need. There we go. Let's see if we can catch a fish with Marlin's bait that he caught for us. We need to take a leak, addicts. We got El Piscatore here. He just freaking dual purpose too. Even women can use this thing. They just show it under here. It's a shiwi. What I like about these fillet away mats is I lay them in here when we're using it today, but then I get moisture under it and fish goo, so I turn it over on the way home and then the air gets underneath the mat. Oh, I see what you mean. The air just goes because of the pegs. Yeah, so we're yeah. going to be fishing today like this, cutting our bait. And then it gets water under it and it gets some fish slime. So I turn it over on the way home like this, and then air can circulate under That's a really it. Good idea. Never thought of that. So being in this place and being on the in this river canyon it just has such a tranquil feeling, you know. It's it's just the only wet oasis out in the desert here. And there's so much life that's happening. You know, there's there's deer along the bank, there's fish rolling everywhere. There's six or seven different species of, of swimming creatures that live in this river. And our target today is one of the biggest that exists. And I just have to say, the tranquility of fishing in the desert is so incredible until you hook a big fish. <laughs> do you want me to do something, Sean? Oh, there's a fish. Fish, fish, fish. Go, go, go. Get go. Oh, yeah, he's there. Get it. He's there. He's there. Yep, I got him. I got him. <laughs> Gotta ease him out of this other line. I'll just keep on him strong. Wow. Okay, we're looking good. Uh, he might be touching that line now. Oh, we're good. Okay, he's waking up, guys. I didn't think he was super big. Hell, we've been here 10 minutes, everybody. Migrate. I went and I found a hole, found a view up there. Got rid of a few pounds. These guys down here getting rods ready. Luckily, they let me take the first fish. Ew! Fish on. Oh! We'll see, now he's turning, now he's going with the current. As soon as I feel any vibration, I'm gonna open the bale, okay? And just like let him so he doesn't cut it, and then we'll go chase him. No, you're good, he's coming back down. Yeah. Oh, there he was! I was looking down, I didn't look, I didn't see him. Now my favorite part about fighting sturgeon in a river system like this is that you're not just reeling this thing up in like a big lake. You have all that mighty current of this river system pushing down. We're fishing in like 20 or 30 feet of water and trying to fight this fish and pull against it and keep it out of that main stem of the current and yet again, yet out of the rocks in front of you. It's a, it's a total challenge, it's a full on workout. And at one point along this fight, I'm wondering if I can even get this thing in. Okay, we're about to get our first look. Whoa! Caught me off guard there. Yeah. When he gets in here. Okay, we're ready. Here he comes. Here he comes. Oh yeah! 
At least five and a half, six footer. At least. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh yeah. That's a good thing. <laughs> Got a real pointy nose, this one. He's barely hooked. Now this thing's finally in the bank. Obviously, I start taking my clothes off. Wow. Wow, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this creature. Wow. Oh. <laughs> yes. Oh, boy. Wow. Wow, this is actually my first time swimming with one. Look at him. So I hop in with the fish and being able to stand in that river, you know, nice warm water, arms wrapped around this giant, like six foot sturgeon, it was a special moment. What a great way to start day two. <laughs> Woo! Right. Wow, thank you, buddy. Mwah. Hey, yep, he's good to go. First fish of the day. Good to go. Except See you later, dinosaur, partner. Dinosaur, dude, dinosaur. <laughs> See you later, buddy. <laughs> Woo! All right! Into Give me some skin, brother! So cool. What a way to start the day, everyone. Nothing like a good poop and a six-foot fish to get your day started. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chuck. Hey, you bet. Badass. One more. Woo! Whoa! <laughs> Addicts, that was absolutely amazing. We weren't even in the water, what, 20 minutes? Not even. He's like, oh, we'll be here for two hours before our first bite. Just kidding. Took about 20 minutes. <laughs> I love it. First fish in the boat. So now you guys know what we're chasing. We are after some prehistoric sturgeon here in Idaho with Chuck from Fish Fighter. He invited us out here. So stoked to be here. First fish in the boat. In mustard? That is in mustard. You gotta eat like a sturgeon to catch sturgeon. Hold on a minute. Sorry, I didn't mean to get right in the way. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Get out of my way, he says. <laughs> Oh! Whoa. Whoa. That thing ate that like I'm killing this chicken in a biscuit. One, up, right? one just jumped right there, a big one. See that? Yep. One just jumped right there, its head came out fully out of the water. His head was like that big around. Yeah, they're on us. They're on us, boys. They're on us. And, uh, oh, there's your bite right there, Jordan. Right there. That rod. Guaranteed. There, oh, look. Here you go, Marlon. Oh, what in the world? Is that my big fish? I don't know, but the whole thing It was about as big as the last one we got. I don't think <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> it thinks it was just tailing out of the water. His tail was just sitting there flapping. We should bobber fish him. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. Right now there's 33 rod holders on the boat. Excessive? <laughs> I think not. Wait! Oh, wait, there's more! Wait! The count's not over. 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. The question is, do you have 39 fishing rods? When I have like four friends come and they bring uh -huh. four rods each, you know, we go down here when we're traveling, then when we get there, they go up. I mean, every one of them gets used during the day. Right. Did you find my pistachios? <laughs> 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 All right, everyone, so we've moved locations here, and I wanted Chuck to kind of explain how we're fishing today, because to me, this is one of the things that makes the fish fighter system really unique, just how versatile we are 
to be able to just really easily move our systems around the boat. So talk about kind of what we're doing today and how you're using it. Yeah, today you saw like here, the currents washed us down a little bit. So we're fishing out the back of the boat. And then a little bit earlier, we were fishing off of the side of the boat. So it's kind of nice to be able to take your rail, move your rod riser, and then we can change the direction. You know, if I want to move this rod, I'll go ahead and move this rod back. I'm going to slip it a little line here. So now I got this one fishing over here and we can really keep our line spread. Another neat thing is if you notice on that fish we caught a little bit ago, you know, we're able to just clear the side of the boat really quick by pulling these rod risers out of the way and, and just clearing the whole side so we can bring that fish in. Yeah, for sure. And for some of the people that may not know, explain, because this rail system that I put on my boat, to, in my opinion, was one of the best upgrades I ever I ever made. So explain how it works for people that may have never even seen it, yeah, with to the rail, to the way the bracket works, to the riser, all of it, because it's just, it's such a well thought out system, everyone. And I just really want Chuck to kind of show you guys how it all works. Yeah, and the key thing is, is our rail, I'll slide the sliding block off, is if you bolt our rail on, then all of our adapters slide on and then you can position your rod riser anywhere you want. And we make these rod risers in all different lengths and offset. And then like me, when I'm traveling down the road, I'm just gonna turn this guy in. Now I've made my boat narrower and now I've made it wider, especially these big rod butts. As you can see, it just give a lot more room for walking around the boat. And it's neat too, like here's a tool accessory we're developing that, you know, you can slide it around. If you want to move it to the other side of the boat, it's real easy to just take this block off, slide it off. Now we can move this to the other side of the boat. And today, as you'll see throughout this fishing video, depending on the side of the river on, we might want our gear on. That thing was 10 feet long. Was he? I'm not even kidding. That thing was, that thing was 10, that thing was. I gotta was, get this middle rod in and change the bait. That so thing was giant, Addix. We should be getting bit. That was giant. Well, enough of this short video. Let's get back to fishing. Exactly. I told Sick. you this is a runway. I told you this is a runway. I oh, Marlon, Marlon. That was a, he was on there for a second. I put it on the line, the seam line. Oh, Seems like the right thing to do. There we go, there we go! Oh wait, no, I guess not. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> so throughout the day, Chuck's telling us about how awesome the trout fishing is in this river, and, and I can already see it. A lot of these rivers like this, these these desert style of rivers offer an incredible source of food for trout species. So we bust out the trout rods, he pulls up to the first little ripple that looks absolutely troutier than hell. And first cast, guess what happens? Oh, got him! Oh, it's a huge one! It's a huge one! It's a really nice one! Oh, it's awesome! That's a good 20 inch fish. Let's get a good look at him here. Oh, ho, ho, ho. chubby McWubby! Oh, that's a good fish, dude, look at that. Going back oh, he's running me. Oh, oh. It came off. Oh, well, we all got a good look at it. That was that was a nice fish. That looked like a steelhead. Now, I did not expect the first cast and the first fish to be that big. This thing looked like a steelhead. And I know there's no steelhead in this section of river at this point in time. But now I need to get back in there. I need to make another cast and see what else is sitting behind that fish. Damn it, I wanted to land that thing. I should have given him a little more slack going down like that. Got him? Yep. Another one. Hardly even two casts later, wham, another fish on. Not oh, quite as big, but. Okay, well here's an example of what we had. This one's a lot smaller. This one looks like a hatchery fish. It's got that rounded nose. That first one we got was definitely a wild trout. It's got kind of that pond rub on his fin. All right, see you later, buddy. Yep. This is the cast right there. That's it. Guaranteed, no matter what. Got him, that's a good one. Even bigger, that's way bigger. Will you, fly, will you neutral out for me? That's huge, dude. Look at this. There's no Are you sure that's a trout? Could be. 
No, that looks like a steel head. Oh. Wow. That's huge. <laughs> Woo. He's going to go ape nuts here. I don't know how to get him, Jordan, without getting hooked. Want to switch positions? Yep. Yeah. You, you land it, I'll get him. He's not done yet. Not even close. Cowboy stuff here. I'm doing cowboy moves. I got to tickle his belly right. He's hooked really good. Just bear hug him and get him in the boat. There we go, I got him. Wow, addicts! Look at that trout! Woohoo! Wowzers, McNowzers. You need a tape measure or are you good? That's at least 26. At least. That's unbelievable, Alex. That Bigger do, than my arm. You do not see wild rainbows that look like that very often, especially in a river like this. And now this thing was, was so incredible. You could tell the different genetics. Had big, tall fins, beautiful, beautiful coloration down the side, and all in all, just a perfect east side trout. Oh. It's all right, I didn't want to drop him. Good We're good. good, we're good. High five, world. That was awesome. Thank you, brother. <laughs> really big one. Really big one, I can't even move him. Can't even move him, he's about to go down. He's going down, he's going down. I have not even seen him yet, you guys. That's big. Oh, what is that? The giant pike man. Okay, that's what threw me off, because he just stayed down. Ow! He got me back. <laughs> well, false alarm. Whew. Got a little overexcited there. Oh, that one, all I'm doing. Stop paying attention. Really nice one. one. Really nice. I just went to start actually coming back in. Maybe they wanted a little faster. Really nice trout. Look at the colors on that one. That one looks wild. Like that first one I hooked, you see that thing had a shark yeah. fin. Yeah, that's an actual red side. Wow. That's a real one there, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that trout. Look at that one. That's a real one. That's a real. Beautiful wild rainbow right there. Just an incredible, incredible rainbow. Let's get him back. Thank you, buddy. Mwah. Woo! Oh, wow. Pure spring water coming right out of the side of the hill. Oh yeah. You know what we have here? Water track. One of my very favorite vegetables in the world. My favorite wild edible. So good. Here, try some. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. Nice and spicy. Guaranteed good. Yeah, oh yeah, water track. One of the oldest edible plants in the world. I'll be damned. Awesome. We're putting this in the taco. Okay, so we scored a bunch of watercress in this spot. I'm gonna stretchy string it up. Got some thread to hold it together here. And tomorrow's fishing trip, we got some catch and cook planned. So I'm not gonna tell you guys too much, but all I'm gonna tell you is this is going in it. Always wear your life jackets, folks. I've learned that a few times the hard way. I've been trying to be really cognizant about wearing these things in most scenarios nowadays. So I'm sure there's gonna be times when you just don't see me wearing them, but I'm trying to set a good example for all you addicts out there. Definitely, when you're in certain scenarios, you should really be trying to wear these life jackets, folks.
Yeah. Now, for those of you who do not know, we were telling Marlon to jump out of the boat and tie us up. And uh, he was running over here into one of the biggest patches of poison oak that I could have seen on the river yet today. And so for those of you who are playing around on the river this, this summer um, and into the fall, this stuff will get you bad. The way you can tell it's poison oak is the three leaves of death. And sometimes they'll have these little yellow berries. And when you see the yellow berries on it, that's when it's absolutely the worst. But if you're camping, if you're out in the bushes, trying to take a number two or trying to boat up or anything like that, stay away from this stuff because it'll ruin your month. You should do a freaking backflip off the top deck. Okay. I don't know, it's only about six foot. <laughs> Woo! Oh, that's so nice. Heck yeah. That's a nice sound when it unplugs, too. Woo! Good way to cool off. Supposed to hit almost 100 today and it's happening quick. Okay, so here's a perfect scenario where we can't tie the boat up down there, the current's too strong, so we're in a big, this back eddy. But all of our gear is gonna wash this way. So we're gonna move all of our rod risers over to this side of the boat. That's called being efficient. And now we're efficient. It's all fun and games until somebody loses a weenie. I'll give you that side, and I'm gonna give you that one backwards. Perfect. There it is, folks. All right. A little cheddar cheese on there. Right there, that rod. That was, that was a fish. That's what you don't want to see, addicts. We got stripped. It's amazing how they can get that bait off there with all that stretchy thread and a big old freaking, what is that, a seven aught? Nine aught. Nine aught. It's amazing how they can do that. Never understood it. Same way with a Springer. I never understand how a Springer can get a herring off of a triple hook rig. Or how a uh, steel hit sucks the head off your shrimp. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, so you may have seen this in the earlier video when we had that fish but this is something I've been working on. When you catch a sturgeon, a big fish, and you can't get near land with them, you gotta take them in at the boat. If you pull up on their head, the tail goes down. And then when people try to lift up the tail to get a good photo or whatever, they end up pulling really hard on the mouth. So it's my belief, I wanna experiment with this, being able to reach down under the water and help gently lift the back of the fish up so that we can tell them and hold them. Then we're able to get them rebreathing again and then be able to safely launch them. So I'm sure people were gonna ask, so I just thought I'd show you what I'm experimenting with. It's called Andy. That one's on. There you go. There that you one's go. on. There you go. There's He's there. All right. Is he? Is he there? Nope. Nope. He was heading down river, wasn't he? When I pulled back, it was the weight on the, on the sure. lead or on the rocks. So the clock's ticking, you guys. The sun is getting high in the sky. It's getting well over 100 degrees already. And now it's time to find one more fish. The goal today is for Marlon and I to both catch a giant sturgeon. So we head to the last spot of the day, and here's what happens. There's your bite. There he goes, there he goes, there he goes. He's on, he's on, he's on. Yes, oh. on the drone, baby! Is he there? Oh yeah, he's on the drone. Yes! Yeah! Ow! I can't even move him off the bottom. Look at him, I can't even move him off the bottom at all. Okay, Jordan commentary now. Sean Guy got that on the drone, instant replay on Marlon's epic hook set. He's on, he's on, he's on. Yes! Yeah! Just gave it all he had, leaned right into her. We're all bent up. No, he's got, he's digging, dude. Yeah. I don't know, oh, wow. Chuck, this is yeah. weird. I'm starting to feel like I got a rock on. Rock lobster? I think that's a rock, Jordan. <laughs> they're real up the bottom, that's what they say. <laughs> oh, he's baby. coming up, Sean. Here we go. He's coming up fast. He's gonna jump. Oh, he's gonna jump for sure, right here. Yeah! Oh! <laughs> yeah, baby! Nice white belly, too. 
Yeah, yeah baby! <laughs> Heck yeah! All right, am I good then? Am I good for the day? Yeah, we're good. Uh, Chuck! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> this thing would not, I couldn't move it. It was just on the bottom, just digging, could not get it up. And these sturgeon, they really, really do make your arms jello. Oh, baby! <laughs> oh, he's way bigger than I thought. Way bigger than I thought. He is so fresh, too. Holy moly. I'm trying to get him, but he just doesn't want me to let him. People pay for this. Yeah, right? You're supposed to enjoy every moment of this. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. Come to Papa. Yeah, he has his bird. Oh, well Die here. <clears throat> Got him. Got him. Okay. You just chill. Look at him! <laughs> yeah, baby. That's a sturge. Give me a look. That's a sturge. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> look at that. Nice. Good job, bro. Freaking brother. awesome, Alex. <laughs> So fighting these big prehistoric fish is probably one of the coolest things you can do. If you've never done it and you're watching this video, I highly recommend get somewhere in the world and catch oversized sturgeon. These things will make your arms jello. Experiencing being able to get in the water with them and being able to hold just such a literal prehistoric creature is an experience I don't think you can ever really live through a camera. You have to do it in real life. So put it on your bucket list addicts and it's gonna stay in my memory and in my heart forever. Oh wow, so cool, man. <laughs> So cool. Good job, buddy. Absolute amazing Woo! fish. Last minute, too. Last, we were just about done, everyone. We were sitting here talking about how warm it is. Time to go. We got some plans for tonight still. And we touched them. Biggest one of the day by far. Get out, Jordan. Okay. Here we go. Later, dude. He's ready to kick away. See you, buddy. Woohoo! Here he goes. What a thrill, addicts. <laughs> Oh, that was awesome. Yes. Well, we figured it was time to go home, but not before some water Malone. <laughs> <laughs> and the fish fighter soon to be released uh, strap extension. You like that? That's pretty sick. So then you can reach out here and do that. Chuck wanted us to experience some of the mountain home Idaho culture and one of their favorite things to do, one thing that Inventive Group actually sponsors throughout the year is some of the dirt track racing. All right, they're off. One of the cool things about where Fish Fighter at is it really is in a family town. This little town in Idaho is supported by a lot of these businesses like Fish Fighter. And we got to go do a cool experience and see these races. And being at these races were cool. These little tiny cars just ripping around the track and people cheering. Just a really good small town experience. Something you're never gonna really be able to see unless you're in a place like that. And I'm glad we got to see it. Challenging for that first place. Oh! Oh! Can't quite get around 
And it was just an all out blast. I mean, I love getting to experience some of the culture. It's something that we don't get to do enough when we do these addicted trips. So thank you so much, Chuck, for inviting us. And it's time for day three. So a perfect, perfect setting again for day three. We get to the lake, it is flat, calm. You can hear guys talking on the very other side of the lake. So we get in the boat, we start ripping across the lake, go through this incredible slot canyon. And I tell you what, today is gonna be a fun day. Morning, addicts. What a beautiful sunrise coming into the lake today. We're after some different species today. We're gonna surprise you. Kind of a little multi-species trip. We got a lot of fish on the target today. We'll see what we can actually put in the boat. And then we might have something a little special planned for the end of the day. So stick with us. It's gonna be a good one. All right, everyone. Probably one of my favorite things in the world to do is to fish top water. I'm gonna someday be traveling around, hopefully just targeting species on top water. So I'm tying a top water on. I'm gonna see. He already got a bite on top water, so we're gonna throw some top water in it and see what bites. That one might be worth eating. Yep, I think he's right at that line. That's perfect, huh? Taco or two. He's got some shoulders. Oh, he spit me, damn it. That was on old peanut butter and jelly. Oh, he nailed it! Oh, yeah! <laughs> he almost flew out of the water on that one. Wow, what a nice one, too. That might be an eater, eh? Oh, yeah. Heck yeah. There it is. My first smallie of the day. That was awesome top water bite. I was a little discouraged. I'm not the best classic bass fisherman. So you can't ever feel them very well, but no need to feel them there. That thing just flew out of the water with that bait. Beautiful swallowing. Do not know monster, but they're eating it right. See what he just spit out right there? Oh, that's a good one. You see that little buddy? Yeah. Is that a large It looks like it. Oh, oh my god. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> a feisty little guy. <laughs> He's little. You got one right now. Nice one. Yeah. No, bounce. Now there's an eager. Oh, I was a little behind him there. I'm really bad at this kind of fishing. Any bets? Bet. I got a crop. I'll bet. I got a crappie. Oh, that's a really good one. Give me the net. Give me the net. What did I tell you? Ask me what color, George. Red and white. Oh my God! Look at this thing. Look at that! Holy shit! Look at that! Oh my God! That's bigger than all the bass. Oh, that is the prettiest is that freaking gorgeous crappie in the white world. Crappie. Oh my goodness! Look at the shininess of his gills, right there on the end of his mouth. So cool! Heck yeah! Shall we eat him? Crappie taco. Taco. <laughs> yeah. Big boy coming out the door. This one's pulling a lot harder than the other one. That's a good fish. Definitely pulling. Might be eating them. 
Oh, oh wow. It looks like a toy, but oh, it's a really good one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There we go guys, getting a couple nice ones for our fish taco meal. I have a feeling these are going to eat really good too, just because this water, water doesn't look too bad. It looks like clean water. Right off that log. Yep. I thought I was on a log for a second. So this whole day is just insane. I mean, we're catching about as many smallmouth as you ever want to catch. Just an absolute beat down, top water, weightless Sankos. It didn't really matter what you threw, you were catching them. But they weren't that big, you know. They were in the like, you know, little small 12 inches to maybe a couple pounds at the max. And so we decided to make a big move and go hunt some big ones. Right at the step. What is that? It's a big old one. It's a big old one. It's not. Right, you have to get that one out. They're way fat. different. They're way different shaped over here. Are you noticing that? They're eating better over here. Crappie. Nope. What is it? Uh, it's bass. I think this is going to be a big one or a small one, Jordan. To make the call, ready? Big or small? Small. <laughs> I got one. I got one too. We're doubled up. We're doubled up. We're doubled up. Bent up. I'm bent up too. All in the mail. There he is. He's a shaker. <laughs> shaker one of the funny things is we're hitting a bass spot and jordan's just casting like a i don't even know what it was like a rattle trap or something he hooks into what we think is like a 10 pound bass yeah. Yeah. what is that that's the catfish that's the catfish it's huge what is that what is that it's shiny see it almost looks like a trout let him run that's huge whatever it is he's migrating he's heading back to the river it's either a catfish or he came the off no oh oh that was a monster i saw it Dang it. That was I have no clue what that was. That was every bit of 10 pounds. Oh yeah. No clue what that was. It was shiny, it was big, it was fast. We found What the hell was that? Those channel cats are in your That was they're gray. Gray with a little silvery belly, you know. Yep. Yep. And there's big shark fin on the back. Probably yep, exactly. I've been begging for a channel cat here the whole time. If we want to add it to our recipe here, we're doing a catch and cook to finalize this video. And we're going to see how many species we can get for this catch and cook. And I just lost the one I've been dreaming about. That might have been Dang it. First fish on the Sanko rig. Oh, I didn't have my fish fighter drag set just perfect. <laughs> oh, we got some shoulders. He's at least seven inches, six, maybe eight. But he's on my rod, not yours. <laughs> He's a little bigger. He's taking line. He's taking line. Here he comes. Coming in. Oh. <laughs> a little small. Nice. Got him? Oh, nice. Oh, I saw him. Nice small. Chunk. Nice small. We got the phone call bite going. Oh, that's a good one. That's an eater. That's an eater. Come on in. Here we're talking. <laughs> Woo! It's the most beautiful thing in the world! Want him alone! <laughs> so I'd had in mind the idea for this day of cooking, and this is why I stopped and actually picked that watercress on the side of the river. I knew on day three we were gonna be hungry at some point, it was gonna get hot outside, and Jordan was gonna have to whip up a little meal.
Now you know we weren't gonna let you guys go without a catching cook, and today is gonna be a good one. We got coffee, bass, and almost, almost had catfish tacos. Big bummer, but now it's time to cook. It's getting late in the day, we're all hungry, it's getting hot, let's make some tacos. Cilantro. Also, the real secret ingredient for this is a little bit of taco seasoning. The rest of our taco seasoning is gonna go on our fish. It's gonna give us a nice little south of the border flavor to all this. Roll it all together, give it a little seasoning, and then into our crisp we go. Okay, we're gonna give our slaw a nice little mix. The key is, is to not add too much of the sour cream or any of the chipotle mayo. We gotta play a bit of le lettuce here, or lettuce you guys, if you will, and cabbage. Just gonna make that make it nice and seasoned. We can add a little more sour cream if we want. But that's actually looking really good. A little bit goes a long way. You can't take it out, but you can always put it in. I love this too, especially when you're doing tacos like on the boat. Everything you need to put on a taco is already in this slaw. So we're gonna chill this, get our fish going. It's almost taco time. More a little shake. The grease gets hot. Okay, we got a nice, nice little flaky nature going. Kind of hard to overcook this bass, but it's very important to get it all the way cooked through, just for the health factor. Nice and flaky. No pink, no pinkiness in the middle. That's looking really good. A lot of people don't like to eat smallmouth, but here where we're at in Idaho, you know, we're on a main tributary that does see salmon and steelhead, and these things are an invasive species. So the key is as long as you're conservative with the fish you catch, you keep those smaller range fish and not those trophy size, they're absolutely amazing to catch and eat. So let's get the rest of this going. Like that? Oh, that's good. Oh, wow. Wow. Mmm. Mmm. Bueno. I gotta give a huge shout out to Chuck, the whole Fish Fighter team. It was an absolute amazing experience being in Idaho. We appreciate you welcoming us with open arms and treating us like family. I think that's one of the coolest things about a lot of the sponsors we have here at Addicted is it's like a family thing. I felt like I was family of the Fish Fighter group the whole time we were there. And the fishing was awesome, jet loading was awesome, and all in all, it was a perfect trip. This is a small hometown made in the USA company, so let's support them. And again, shout out to Chuck, shout out to Fish Fighter. Until next time, we'll see you on the river.